All right, so let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to winter. Can be. Um, okay, are there comment, public comments for items not on the agenda? Cliff, you had something? Yes, I just wanted Recording to- Recording uh, in progress. I just wanted to uh, give the select board a brief update from the friends group. We have uh, identified a carrier for insurance and uh, we've got a, a good quote from them. There's a couple of questions we need them to answer, but it looks like we'll be able to move forward with securing coverage. Um, we're gonna hold off on pulling the trigger on that until you know we, the hall is officially open because it doesn't make sense right. for us to pay for insurance when we're not in a position to be utilizing it. Uh, well, with I regards to that idea of opening it, we have uh, pretty much put the final touches on the management agreement. Um, probably at our next meeting, we'll be able to finalize it. Um, however, at our most recent meeting, we discussed the possibility of having uh, some members of the Friends come and meet uh, with the select board for the purposes of making sure we understand what the select board's expectations are of the friends so that oh. we can be sure that we've included that in the management agreement before we put it in front of the select board again. So okay. basically that's a long-winded way of asking if we could be on one of the future agendas to have that discussion. Okay now I thought that the hang up of opening the upstairs for the public use was the insurance. So I think am I Remembering wrong? Well, the insurance is one part of it. We we also need to formalize the management agreement and sign off on that. Uh, right. Because okay. that that being put into place then authorizes the friends to act on behalf of the town in terms of renting out the hall to people and set scheduling events to occur there, non-municipal events, um, and Obviously, we, we want to make sure that we have um, insurance that's going to cover those non-municipal events, as you learned with your meeting uh, with uh, Passive, uh, the insurance that the town carries would not cover those non-municipal events, and certainly nothing that was staged by the friends. And one of the requirements for being able to obtain the insurance is that we have a management agreement in place with the select board. Okay, so it's like, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, more or less. But I mean, the, the sequence of events is, is we'd like to meet with the select board to make sure we understand your expectations so we can be sure that we've included all of that in a management agreement. Then we would have another meeting with the select board where we sit down and you've had a chance to review the management agreement and you can ask us any questions, make any changes if necessary. And then at some point, sign off on that management agreement. Okay. Um, and then the final part of that is once the management agreement is in place and formalized, then we would go ahead and flip the switch on getting the insurance. And at that point, the select board can say, okay, we're willing to open the hall up for uh, other uses and cool. people start booking it. Okay, so you, so you did I hear you say that you have the management agreement ready to send to us? We're pretty close. We're, okay. we're just uh, cleaning up some of the language, but <laughs> as we were discussing it, it seems like it's been so long since we last met and yeah. discussed the management agreement with the select board. We thought it might make sense to have some members of the friends come before the select board and just make sure we're clear on what the select board's expectations are. We think we're pretty clear on it, but we don't want to slow the process down by presenting a management agreement and says, well, this doesn't say anything about this or that. And we thought you guys were going to be doing that. Yeah. Okay. Sharon has a question. I, I have a, I have a suggestion. Um, I, I echo Cliff's point. Hi, Cliff. That I can't been, um, hear what she's saying. Uh, what I'm waving at the I'm waving at you though up there on the big screen. Um, where, where should I be speaking that way? Oh, no, it's not working. It, it's not working right. Cliff's gonna 
work with um, RB Tech Tech because it seems so like what's where's our audio coming from? I think over here. The right. audio and video is all in the laptop right now. You're gonna have it's not to get. I will relay. So Denise. Yes. Here's what I want to say, Cliff. Thank you, um, and I agree with the the point that it's been a while since we've heard from. You. Oh shoot! Nowhere to go. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna keep, just keep talking. Yeah, um, but we did meet with them at, as a whole board with several folks from the friends group and that would have been September, August or September maybe, if memory is serving. Oh, last, yeah, this past summer. Right, so, um, so my thought is that we pick a couple of us to go offline with the friends Review the minutes, you know, remind ourselves what the issues that we raised are, um, and represent us in a more detailed conversation with the friends group offline and then come back and say, you know, remind us here are the three issues, here's how they've worked them out. That's my thought. Because once we all open up the, the management room, there's lots of interesting stuff in there, but the fact is, we really want to just move it forward and, and I think I remember, even last time they were here we said the point is to move this forward if it needs to be updated in a year we'll do it and and I don't disagree with that but I think there was enough question from everybody that I'm not sure that we're going to capture everybody's concern by going offline um, I might be more inclined to say let's have a meeting hear what the concerns are and then go offline. So that, because I know everybody had some, everybody was commenting on this management agreement when they brought it forward. But were they documented in the minutes? Um, I'm not exact, I'm not sure how well it was documented or if the friends documented it. But I know that there was, I know there was a lot of comments and questions. So that's why I'm thinking maybe we set a certain amount of time so that we can all be, so we can all get re-familiarized with the document. I know I need to get. And then do the tinkering offline and bring it back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But also with an eye to keep me the first round relatively fresh. Yeah. yeah. That's sense. Because I don't think Rick and Mark were involved when we maybe did it. Way well, back. I, like, I like this idea, Denise, because we don't want to commit. I mean, the whole board spent a lot of time this day yeah. trying to rewrite a document. Right, but I think budget time, yeah, so. right, it's budget time. So my my thought is, we take and we, if everybody commits to looking at the document before we meet, then we can flush out what the issues are and then meet offline to come up with. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, Cliff, Ben Cliff. Does Cliff remember when the last meeting was? I mean, we could all go look it up. But it's not hard to find the segment of the discussion in the videos. Or the minutes. Um, right, but if it wasn't yeah. well, if we just, if, Katie, if the notes were kind of broad, then we could watch that. Watch the video. Even though it felt like a long time, it might have been like half an hour. So yeah. We could watch it, see what we raised. Yeah. So we're not repeating ourselves. Yeah. I just have one question for Cliff. <coughs> Cliff, can you hear me? Yes. Who is the insurance company? Um, let me, I gotta look at their name. I can never remember their name. The underwriter is SNH. Um, see if I can pull that up. Give me a minute. Okay. Okay, well, while you're looking that up, I think we've got a plan then going forward. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yeah. Could you reiterate that for me, Denise? Because I kind of have a hard time hearing everything Sharon was saying. I just, so I just want to make sure I understand. Do you, Sharon wants to know if you remember the date you were last here with the management agreement. I believe it was October 23rd, 2020. Yeah, see, it's been a while, so that's why that I, long? Yeah, it's been a long time. That's why I think it might help, especially the new members. All right, I stand to kind of go through 
where we left off and then we can move forward. It's better. It's hard to believe, right? I thought I will, if you told me it was August, <coughs> I would, I would, that's where I was. Okay. Okay. So I think we have a plan and we can move on so we can get started with the rest of my meet, our meeting. Are you all set, Cliff? The insurance agency is Isham Berwick Agency Incorporated. Oh, I've heard of them. And s &H, uh, is the underwriter of the policy. We, they gave us a, a couple of different options of underwriters and okay. looking over the overall policies that were proposed, that seemed to be the better deal. And okay. we can certainly provide a, a copy to the select board if you'd like an opportunity to review that. <coughs> Well, I think when this thing is agended, yes. But then, when, we, when we get ready to roll on it, we'll want to mm -hmm. have a copy of the policy clip. Okay. So okay. what what we're saying then is to um, a few members of the friends will sit down with the select board at a future meeting to be determined, date to be yep. determined, and then uh, after that we will come back present you the policy you'll all have an opportunity to review the policy and the proposed management agreement and then we'll have another meeting to answer any final questions and hopefully sign off on it at that point with a lot happening offline yeah there's going to be i mean we'll have some stuff offline once everybody's like cliff i mean uh mark and rick have never been involved in this so i know that probably just getting some background will help Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. You're welcome. Have a good meeting. Okay. So moving forward, um, the warrants are circulating. Sandra, um, let's do the treasurer's report. Why is this document look so weird? Every document is the next document down. Is there we go. Okay. Um, and I think I had asked you a couple questions today about the point, about the, um, your report. And now I can't, I don't remember what my questions were, but I know that we answered them. Well, um, so do you want to run us run us through? Sure. This is um, this report was presented or emailed to the board early in November, and it um, reports on the end of October, October thirty first, twenty twenty one. We are in the first third of the fiscal year. Everything is on track. Um, we in October we were in the middle of tax collection. As of right now, we're we're really coming to the end of it. We have about three hundred thousand outstanding at the moment, and historically, the town typically goes one hundred ninety thousand dollars or so in uh, delinquencies that mostly are collected by the end of the year. So. Um, we're, we looked good in October and we continue to look good from a revenue standpoint as, as we sit together tonight. Expenses are on target in both general government and um, highway. To date, we've received 200 and almost $240,000 in ARPA distributions. A like amount will uh, be distributed to the town in FY23, which begins- Now, Sandra, yeah. that, that, that figure of 239, that's state and, I mean, that's the- um, State and county. State and, and county? Yes. Okay. So we'll see that and uh, we'll see a like amount in FY23, which, uh, so sometime after July 1, 2022. Um, Balance sheet looks good, reflects the healthy state of our revenues and expenditures to date. Delinquencies, we have one parcel outstanding from 2020, roughly $2,700 in outstanding taxes, penalties, and interest. Um, we have attempt, we've sent bills every month. The bills are not returned. The certified mail has not been picked up. 
the taxpayer has been seen at, at and around uh, their home. And I, I leave it to the select board at this point to direct me how to proceed. This parcel meets every criteria for turning um, the parcel over to the town's attorney for collection purposes. No payment, no agreement, and no contact of any kind. And again, I remind the board that we've emailed, sent regular bills and also a bill by certified mail. Um, note, the taxpayer has not paid the 2021 taxes and it has been the attorney's um, uh, practice it, where there is one year's delinquency and the current year is delinquent to combine both and proceed to collections. I did a little research on this taxpayer because you know we are all concerned for this person. This is a senior member of our community. And um, I did discover that in 2020, the year that is currently delinquent, that taxpayer did receive a very sizable property tax adjustment credit. However, this year there was no property tax adjustment credit, which you mean a home, when you say that, do you mean a homestead exemption? You can, yes, you, you make, yes. Okay. Uh, so that that tax bill, which was two thousand dollars last year, is five. Is pardon me, seven thousand dollars this year. And again, I really wonder if um, if we just can't find somebody to reach out to this person. Uh, did this person file their income taxes for twenty twenty? We don't see a property tax adjustment credit on the bill. There have been property tax adjustment credits on prior bills. You know, I do have some concern. I am not so sure that this person actually is a scop law. There may, there actually may be other um, variables at work uh, now that I've seen that tax bill and I do not see a property tax adjustment credit on it. So again, I, uh, as your employee, I wait for direction for the board with the caveat okay. that all criteria is meant at this point to treat this person uh, essentially the same as other uh, delinquent taxpayers in the past. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think we have to treat this person the same way consistently that we do everybody else. I think we've more than reached out to see, to make sure that, you know, for her well being. You know, and she's been seen around, neighbors have seen her. Um, I think maybe getting a letter from an attorney saying your property is going to be, a, you know, yeah. going into collections might spawn some action. Is this a senior person? Yeah, it's a senior person, but. Could be somebody. I mean, <clears throat> if Jim sends a letter. Well, it's not Jim, but it's Gloria Rice. Gloria Rice. And, and nothing happens. In other words, if we refer it to council, do they have, do, do, what if this person is not council? You know, they've lost, they're not. She's been they're, seen walking. I know, maybe they've become senile or something like that. How is that going? I don't think we've had that issue before, but I know that she's been seen taking walks on various roads around town. Mm -hmm. um, and Sandra, you said the certified mail, you do, I heard, but this might not be right. It wasn't picked up? Correct, it was not picked up. And it was uh, in play during the time that this person was seen in and around her home and in and around town. One thing the board should be aware of is uh, up to the time that we turn a parcel over to the tax collection attorney, in this case, Gloria Rice. Taxpayers can negotiate with me, they can communicate with me and I with the board and we can work out a payment plan. But once that parcel goes to the attorney, that ability is terminated. The attorney, it, there's an instant, I believe it's an 8% um, 
attorney's fee, and then cost to get for a certified mail, publication in the newspaper, and so forth, that is added to that bill, at which point uh, the, the only option for the taxpayer is to pay directly to the attorney one there's no there's no further negotiation with the town that is foreclosed right. once it's turned over so it's really it's a it's a um it's a big it, it's a step that once we do it we don't we cannot turn back from it the i do right. have i a just want to question. i just want to make sure that we you know, if we're going to go knock on the door of this person and this, that, and the other thing, then that means that sets a precedent for doing it for others. I think the neighbors have checked on her because I asked them to, um, and they reported back that she's there and she appears to be fine. So I don't think we can keep putting this off, sadly. I think we have to take some action, but we'll have to put it on another agenda to do so. It's not because this the, the fact that it's a report here, that's doesn't that's not sufficient. Right. When was the when was the last time, um, Sandra? When was the last time that we sent a property to Gloria? Last year. We had one last year, and was it sold? Mm -hmm. It was sold, and not redeemed. Right, and that that person that property was a habitual. But not a primary residence, if I remember. I think no, that was a primary residence. It was also. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, so, let's, so let's not discuss it twice. Let's attend it. Right. Yep. So um, anything else in your report? The so highway? Sandra, you're hearing that we do one on agenda. OK? Yeah, I think she. Uh, we're going to put it on a future. We're going to put it on a future agenda to, for the board to make the decision. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So highway, everything there looks good. Highways in again. Highway is in great shape. Um, they have over one hundred twenty thousand dollars in their capital equipment fund, which hopefully will provide a nice base for going forward and planning uh, future purchases. I think this is. Uh, probably one of the first opportunities that they've had to have um, that kind of money for planning purposes. And I know the board is working, Rick is working with them now to make the best use of it. Right. You're talking about taking $40,000 out and there, there was the email for the 120, if I understood that correctly, to make a, a payment, one of the the West Star. The West Star truck. So, okay. Yeah. The question I'd have in that is, you know, we, we will be buying, we need to be buying a new truck, you know, or we need to be replacing a truck. Mm -hmm. Our, we're at that seven year warranty point starting in October. So, we'll need, and then. Well, we need to budget for it. We'll need to put it on the town warning. Right. We want to make sure. We're, right. And then we, uh, you know, we want to be beginning to discuss that greater, greater replacement as well. Right, right. And that would be part of our, when we do our budget stuff. That's right. Yep. Okay. You know, okay. we're going to be pulling some numbers together. For... Uh, okay. Uh, I'm I, moving I, on. Just a quick one. I hear you talking about the greater, that greater was purchased with a state of Vermont uh, capital equipment loan at 2%. Once that's paid in full, and I do believe that uh, the FY22 payment pays it in full, you will be eligible to reapply to that fund for um, that loan at that rate, which is still lower than all, all the rates that we have at the moment. So something to keep in mind. When is it FY22? And would that happen in July? Or uh, that uh, It would happen before June 30th. 2022. I don't know right, the exact payment date. Okay, uh, no, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. Um, just looking to see if there's anybody have any other um, comments on or questions on the treasurer delinquent tax 
tax collector report. Tax that you said, it sounds like taxes are coming in, tax payments. Yes, they are. And the, dead, the deadline is November 15th. So it's gone by. Right. So you have your uh, seven day grace period that ended today. Uh, our, our town attorney has advised us that we must accept envelopes postmarked up to date. date. So our final deadline will be sometime next week when the last of the postmarked tax checks comes in. Okay. Very good. Anything else, Select Board? All right. If not, we'll move on to um, the audit report. And I had... Um, I sent Fred several questions that I had. Um, I read the entire report. It was so exciting to read the entire report. At least someone does. I was <laughs> I'm glad. And you saw that I had, I sent you a list of my questions. Um, and then the, I guess maybe the thing to do is to see if you want to just give us kind of a, an overview, a brief overview of your, of the audit and go from there. Sounds good. I'll do that. Um, and then I can go through your questions. Okay. okay. And then see if there's any other questions. Um, so this is the regular audit um, that gets done every year under state statute. Um, it is an audit done in accordance with government auditing standards, which is uh, more strict than regular auditing standards for private companies. Uh, what, it, what it requires is two letters, two reports. One is the opinion on the financial statements and it adds in a report on compliance and internal control, which is at the back of the uh, audit report, but it, that's part of an audit in accordance with government auditing standards. Uh, other than those two letters, the rest of the statements are yours. Um, it's, it's, it's your records, your, your notes, um, and we give you our opinion on whether those are in accordance with, with the, the standards. Mm -hmm. So on page two is our opinion. There are two qualifications, both related to the cemetery fund. Uh, one, one is that the investments are carried at market value. Everything else that you do is carried at cost. And so and that, that, that was, I'm, I'm what, sorry, you're uh, talking about page two of the audit report. One of the, one of the letters dated October 13th, is that what you're talking the letter, about? Yeah, the letter bound in with the financial statements. You mean into the, in, the, in with the report? Correct. Yes, page two of that, yep. Yeah, and that was one of my questions to you. Yep, and the second one is that it, as far as we can tell, there has been not any tracking of the amount of perpetual care funds that it's received over the years. And so, um, or even if there are perpetual care funds. And so typically when lots are sold, there is a certain portion of the sale proceeds that must be maintained in perpetuity and where only the income can be spent on the maintenance of the cemeteries. That number is not available, at least when we tried to get it. And so the total is fine. We just don't know the mix of those fund balances between how much is perpetual care versus how much is committed or restricted or assigned. Right. So well, we just need some homework to be done to get that breakdown, if any. Right, and if you, the letters, here's these letters that you had, there was quite, you know, there was a paragraph about the cemetery fund. We, I did send to the cemetery commission and to the trustees. The trustees have done a good job in helping the cemetery commission get their finances back on track. Yep. So they may be, they may be able to help with this piece as well. Yep. Because, because my, I, one of my questions to you was, they don't, I mean, you audit the cemetery funds. The cemetery funds are a separate budget from the select board budget. The cemetery commissioners are elected, but they don't necessarily, if we didn't send them this, they wouldn't know what you found, right? Correct. Although we've discussed it with them. And so 
we, oh, and, okay. and doing and doing this audit, yeah, we've had communications, Sandra and myself, and the at least eight commissioner, I believe, Sandra. I don't know if it was a. Uh, well, it was Rod Buck, the trustee, is okay. who we had communication with. Yeah. Okay. So, but but so the answer to the question is the all audits are addressed to the legislative body of the of the entity and they are part of the legal entity being the town of Callis. And so we, while we address the report to you, it's certainly shareable to anybody who it affects. So, you know, we, we encourage you to, to send them a copy with, with our suggestions um, yep. as it is to any taxpayer or actually anybody. I mean, it's public information once it's released to you. So yeah, it's it certainly is public shareable. Information. Yeah, and yep. they, they have received it. And Perfect. I told them that we were meeting tonight in case they wanted to zoom in, but... All right, so we've um, covered the bases with, with that, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, and so then at the bottom, what we say is that, so that just affects that fund, really, and then, but what you have is a clean, unmodified opinion on your general fund, your highway fund, and everything else, all the aggregate remaining information, and so it's it's really just that one fund. Okay. Um, can, would before we leave the cemetery fund, can I... Um, Hi, friends. This is um, Sharon Wind. So, you mentioned there's some homework to be done, and you've made your recommendation. Uh, yes. So, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm. I'm not seeing the recommendation. Is it in this letter? And I'm just not seeing it. Well, there's to clarify. We have this letter with a schedule of recommendations dated June 30th, 2021. Is that the same as what's in the bound in the report? I'm sorry, I, I can't quite hear, but there's a separate letter of recommendations that was issued as well. And yeah. and someone asked about that. That is the five page letter. Yeah. And all of our reports have to be dated as of the same day that the what's called a representation letter was signed by Sandra, where she accepts responsibility for the financial statements. And at that point, our standards indicate that regardless of when we send the letters, they all have to be dated that same day. But those, those that, but it is dated at the top June 30th, 21, correct? And that's the October 13th letter, Fred? Yes, correct. Yes. Yes. There's, there's two letters dated October 13th which is so weird. They didn't get to the town office until today. Um, but, okay, but what I'm still... It has a recommendation, Sharon. That's why I'm saying. But that one, the one you have is... It says we recommend that the town utilize the general... Oh, I'm, right. hang on. Okay, I'm, here's, here's my disconnect. Okay. I thought that these were just the same letter. No. Well, no. Okay. no, there's two different letters the same <clears> date. <throat> and it okay. says on the last page... Under, there's a whole pair, two paragraphs about the cemetery fund. Okay. Now so I, those are the recommendations. I was in the wrong document. Sorry for that. That's okay. okay. Yep. All right. Um, so, Denise, do you want me to simply go through your questions now, or? Sure. Sure. Okay. I don't know if I I don't know if I put those in the. Um, it's in the folder. Yeah. So. Yeah. Those are my your questions. questions. Yeah, one of your questions related to fund balance. And if you look on exhibit C on page six, you'll and that's see- a, that's the bound report? Everything that I'm talking about now is the bound report. It's the only letter, the only ones I'm talking about at this point is the bound report. Okay. So on page six of the bound report, all your, every amount that you've mentioned in looking at those, is in on that page and there's different components to fund balance and every fund has their own fund balance. So if you're looking at the general fund, the bottom of the first column, you're gonna see that it has some committed fund balance an unassigned fund balance of 435,000 and a total fund balance of 450. And then right. other funds have various fund balances. So when you were looking at some of the schedules, what you were seeing was some of the discrete funds but all the numbers you mentioned in your number two all show up on this exhibit C. 
Okay, so I see the, I see, okay, so I don't so the see four, all the numbers. Okay, so we go. Oh, I see, okay, 416 is over, over here on the right-hand yep. column. Yep. And aren't you sorry that I really read this whole thing? No, it's good. I'm happy you, someone did, so. Um, okay, all right, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, and so they're just different levels of restrictions on those funds. So some of them, if it's a restricted fund, that means that some outside party has said, you can only use the money for this particular purpose. And that's typically right. gonna okay. be through a grant contract or a donation. Committed means that right. the voters, the voters through the budget process have approved moving money to specific funds. And therefore- Like the, the reserve only way that, fund? Like a, yeah, yeah. Like a reserve way, fund? Exactly. And the only way this that the select board could do something different would be to go back to the voters on those. Gotcha. The, assigned, the assigned funds are simply money that the select board has control over, and it's they've earmarked them for certain things. And so one of your questions was related to the Curtis Pond Dam. That is a fund in your general ledger, but it is only assigned money. And so can you spend it for that? Sure. But you could also spend it on anything you want. That, that's money at, that's at the discretion of the select board. You could leave it there, you could move it back tonight. Uh, you could change the assignment to something totally mm -hmm. different. That, that's totally under the control of the select board. Because that's an assigned from. It, it's interesting because I thought that money just kind of poof was gone. It so can I was, only be I was gone really with interested. the select board making a motion to make it be gone. Once a fund gets set up, it's there forever until the select board says, move that money back and close that fund or, or, we, or do or something we else. It, are we, are we spend it on Curtis Pond Dam stuff? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Yep. Um, you ask about why we talk about the Salt Waste District and East Montpelier Fire District on page 25. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you notice the, the title of that, of one of the notes is commitments and contingencies. Yeah. And so all we're saying, and it's just a very short sentence on the solid waste district is that you're a member. And if there were any deficits or over expenditures there, they can special assess you. And so it's simply letting readers know that the, the town of Callis is as it is here, but if there was something that happened at the center of Vermont, the, the, the solid waste district, they could assess you for any shortfalls, lawsuits, environmental issues. So you're a member and as a member, you, you, they, you, they have that right. So it's just a warning. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's a standard warning. Yeah. Just we, it's in pretty much every audit. Uh, the, the East Montpelier fire district relates because you have an agreement and you're liable for a portion of the debt. And so that's simply explaining your relationship with them. Um, the, the, with the volunteer fire department and, and your, what commitments you've made to reimburse them for the debt over the mm -hmm. next few years. So they're, they're really just explaining that we've got some things out there that are either impossible or in East Montpelier's fire department case, uh, an actual agreement to make these payments. Okay. So it's just disclosing that. Um, and then I think we already talked about the letter. I think it was just, we got that letter to you um, once, right. once, uh, yeah. So I think I think the recommendation letter was sent earlier. Um, we sent a PDF of that. I think on the sixteenth. Uh, no, that's actually the audit committee letter. I think the recommendation letter was sent even earlier, in a PDF on the ninth. Um, and then the hard copies. Why they got there today, I don't know. They were mailed back then. Um, the mail's been slow. Um, yeah. I, it I, yeah. So that's see, why you know, I the think. Problem, see, the problem with the letters, Fred, is that they both say October 13th, 2021, and they sort of start out the same. It doesn't say exactly. what the letters what yeah. the letters are for. If it, if it said like in Ray recommendations and this letter mm -hmm. is this and this letter is that, then we wouldn't be so confused. Yep. Yep. You're not the first one to ask that. So these are standard letters, but. Uh, we've had others ask us to put titles on them, and we could certainly do that. Yeah. So one is yeah, a letter of recommendation. Really yeah, the five-page letter is a letter of recommendations, and we've talked about that a little bit. 
And the four page letter is a kind of a closeout letter to the board that basically tells you how the audit went. And what it says is that we were cooperated with fully. We weren't coerced in any way. We were provided all the information we asked for. Uh, we were given free and unfettered access to anyone, to anyone we wanted to talk to. Um, and, and your staff was ready for us when we arrived. So we ought to be Okay, Mark has a question. Um, I'm talking about the recommendation. I guess uh, multi, uh, multi part question. Can you tell us where you're looking? Yeah. I'm looking, at the, uh, I'm looking at the final three pages of the letter that contains three pages of the recommendation. It recommends that we have a fraud policy. It recommends we do a fraud risk assessment. It recommends documentation of internal control systems and an investment in banking policy, as well as changes to the cemetery fund. Mike, I have two questions. One is, has this been discussed with the treasurer or the town staff? And what's their reaction? This seems to me to be a good bit of work. And the second is, it's, I'm not sure, when I look at the documentation of the internal control system, it seems to overlap completely with the fraud policy and the fraud risk assessment. Uh, and then the third is, if we don't have them and we feel strong that we ought to, do you have uh, sample policies we could use? Templates. I think, so I I think VLCT, VLCT probably has templates. Yeah, they do. VLCT has sample policies on their website through the uh, MAC Municipal Assistance Center, and they'll, they, they're, they're good policies. Uh, you can start with them and tailor them to you, uh, but, but they are good policies. But you make sure you do, they're, you know, they're not, they expect you to look at them and make sure that they're you know, they're not one size fit all, but they were a good start. So you, on a fraud policy, for instance, you need to decide how you want to, to tailor that to the town. Uh, that's an important one. And I hope you never have to use it, frankly. Um, but what it, what it does is that it lets everybody know, what do we do if, 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 if we either have it or if we have suspicions of it, how do we protect both the accused and the accuser? Who do they go to? Who's the impartial, how, you know, what do we do? We, it's just one of those things that I said, it's just, you know, we hope you never need to use it, but it's, and, and the VLCT has a good model policy. You just want to make sure you agree with who they, who they think you might want to go to. And it could be a town attorney, uh, could be the chair of the select board, could be, you can choose that. Uh, and then the next step ultimately becomes, if it, if it does happen, it's going to be attorney and law enforcement. Um, but, but again, I hope you never need it. Um, and I think we've talked about coming, doing a fraud policy, so this is not new. Well, the question is, all of these policies, I understand them. The question is, who's going to do it? Is this staff or us? Well, I think Sandra would work on the policies regarding fraud, investments, those kinds of things. Control. Internal controls, no. because that falls under the <coughs> treasurer duties. So we would ask Sandra to draft these and then bring them to us. Right, and she can get um, templates off of VLCT's website. Great. I'm actually, I had all of those same questions, Mark, so thank you for raising them. Um, I'm actually really happy to see these recommendations. Um, years ago, we noted in the context of, it, I guess, the, the more a colloquial audit, for lack of a better term. So we have yeah, a lot. Of, we have a lot of. Um, we have, in most areas, we had good practices, and we were meeting the practice expectations with the VLCT checklist. Do you guys remember this conversation from? Yeah, and we and we reviewed that checklist. Right. But we didn't have, but we didn't have the policies that wrap around the practices. We had we had good practices, but no policy that ensure sustainability of those practices. Right. And I think that translates to what we're now getting as a recommendation. Right, no, I, I think it's, I think they're good recommendations. 
Do we need to affirmatively ask Sandra to work on drafting these and bring them back, or is that something Sandra is just going to do as a result of the audit? I think Sandra will, you can speak for yourself, Sandra, but I think based on the audit, that it seems to me that you would be taking this to heart and look at doing, you know, not, a, not you don't have to bite everything all at the same time, but one at a time to bring them, you know, up to the board. And I want to say, uh, yes, if the answer is yes, thank you, Sandra, but also we should acknowledge it's not Sandra's shortcoming that we don't have these no, policies. No, no. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's our, and in, in, at other times when the question has come up, I do remember a sentiment that, you know, as long as we have good practices, we need the policy, but it's great the times have changed. And Sandra, thank you for being here at the time that the, the conversation is changing and we're ready to get a policy in place. Thank you. Yeah, no, this is not a fault of Sandra's. We just haven't really focused in and directed that we need these policies. Well, it's not a fault. It's an evolution. It's just right. evolving. Right. It's, it, everything is evolving. Improving every day, right? Right. right. Everything in government, especially locally, is evolving weekly, if not daily. So, one thing we, we skipped over pretty quickly, but in the bottom, I mentioned there's a letter in the back, a very last letter that is a report of compliance and control. And what you'll see in there is that we have no material weaknesses and no report of conditions in joint control. So, that, that's a clean and joint control letter. So, what that means is that what we're talking about here is simply things that are other recommendations. None of them rise to the level of control deficiency. Right. So even the one that talks about documentation, we're not saying change your controls, we're saying document. Right. Yeah, we get that. Right. right. So it's a clean up. Yeah. 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 So I just want to make sure that that, yeah. that nuance is understood. That. And then unless there's some policies that need to be, you know, everybody needs to do these. Um, well, it just is, it's just everything coming together. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And right. And so and I'm actually, right. and I don't know, you, you based on the amount of money you're getting from our like, you will and that doesn't mean that the federal state might not have been brought by. Mm -hmm. If they do, some of these policies are required. Yep. Uh, so, so the documentation and control system is one of the things that the federal government has indicated is required under uniform guidance. So that I, I sincerely doubt that they get a visit because they've got their hands full. Um, but it doesn't mean you should at least think about getting it done at some point. And, and somebody's right, this, this is a big project. Yeah. This isn't, you know, this is one that's going to take some time. Right. And, you know, and the idea is to prioritize it a little bit. And that's something that can be a joint effort between Treasurer and Select Board in terms of what things we want to tackle first. Right. Yeah. Some, should... of, them, some of them, yeah, some of them are pretty straightforward. The fly policy, that, that will take long once you get them off the policy. Um, there's others that will take some time. And some will get some will need some buying like the ones related to the senator. Um, right. So, because you're right, they're they're a separate elected board and, and you know, they may not want to do some of these things. And these are recommendations, doesn't mean they have to agree with them. Right. So so, so so point of clarification, we could ask a town meeting that the, the voters of the town make these changes. By vote, right? Which, and then which changes? The changes to shift the the earnings from the cemetery investments into the general fund. Um, I don't know how that, I don't know how that would work. Well, I mean, there was I, I I don't think we can you know, I don't think it would be appropriate I mean, for us to you know. We can. We can. The select board, we don't have authority over them. Right. No, we cannot. Well, okay, right. Right, right. So. I would suggest that maybe the select board meet with the cemetery commission and discuss you know, putting something in place that follows this recommendation. And mm -hmm. It may need a vote of the town's folks to make that adjustment. Well, it would be good to hear from the trustees because they have, I don't know if you were here when, when they were talking about it, the trustees have met with the cemetery commission to talk to them about the problem. Yeah, I so it's coming up. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, so what was... We don't result? know what, we don't know what... Oh, yeah, we haven't heard that. We haven't heard that. Okay. So. Right. I, so, Sharon was just going to say something. Well, um, I think I... Rick has a question. 
<laughs> yeah, well, my question is how deeply do you look into uh, various uh, commissions that we have, you know, are for compliance with uh, federal, say, federal record keeping and things like that that would be tied to utilization of funds? You mean grants? Yeah, yeah grants. grants. Yeah. yeah. Is that, did you get, get that deep into, into, uh, into the audits? Only that would be purely the state, the financial statements, so if there were larger grants, then we would look at them. If there were grants that were very specific, um, and have test cases we may have to expand the agency. But the Secretary Commission really just has the responsibility for we We know all the funds that are, are in that fund are being specific. So we just appears that. Yeah, I think that's not, that's not yeah. really the question. The question is, is we have several grants out there, and do you audit the various boards, committees, commissions, grants, whether they're complying with um, the grant requirements? No. That's only, if only if the non-compliance would cause the money, to, that a material amount of money to have to be returned. Yeah, so that's yeah. not really in your, yes. I think, I know, I mean, what you guys are getting yeah, at. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 If there were grants that we thought were higher risk, we would certainly look at them and test compliance. Okay. Good, okay. And I know that you have any grants that are that are high risk like that. Okay. All right. That, so, I think the, the only thing I want to say is, Sandra, congratulations on a clean audit. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful Yay. Well done. I knew we, we knew she would be very cooperative, so that's not a surprise. I, may I say, uh, just a point of clarification on the cemetery funds, beginning the FY23, the trustees have suggested to the cemetery commission that they take 4% of the earnings or of the balance of the fund which on October 31st and apply that to the anticipated cemetery budget. So there would be essentially a check written from the T. Rowe price account and that we're ex expecting about $9,400 to be written to the cemetery commission for operating costs. Um, the trigger for that was for the fund to uh, reach that 200,000, pardon me, the $200,000 mark, which it did this year. So we have um, sent the Cemetery Commission a request for their FY23 budget, instructed them that after they have constructed their budget to apply $9,400, which will be placed into their fund from the T. Rowe price account. And hopefully that relieves the taxpayers of uh, a, signif a significant amount of money uh, at budget right. time. Right, so it will, reduce, it will reduce their budget request for FY23 basically, right? We hope, that's the yeah. idea. So we're hoping yeah. they don't increase their budget by $9,400. <laughs> Do we do we have accountability here to follow up with the cemetery commission in in particular around? I mean, I want to start asking questions about how they are going to do the forensics and identify perpetual care funds. But but do we have? I mean, do we think it's our job to kind of check in with them and say, hey, you guys had some? I don't know. I actions to take. Sandra, I don't think it's, I don't think I think it's legally it required because this is a recommendation, not a finding of deficiency, but well, good yeah. practice yeah. Well, would say that we should ask the cemetery fund mm -hmm. to respond to this mm -hmm. to affirmative proposal. Well, well, except that we don't oversee it. And that, no, we don't. And that, that's kind of my, the spirit of my question is maybe, maybe collegially offline right. Right. rather than well, they were sent all of the documentation so they know that we're aware. I'm assuming that Rod or somebody will um, will get back to us, but it is their turf. Yeah, okay. T-U-R-F. T-U-R-F? 
All right, are we done with Thought. this? So we, can, we can move on. We're way off. We're way we off. Are. Well, yeah. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah. Well, well done, right. Sandra. Thank you. Did we need to make a motion to accept the audit? So moved. Second. 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 Uh, All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Okay, Alfred, you're up. You can, if you want, why don't you bring a chair around over here? Because there's something wrong with the owl. Cliff is checking it out. So we're not going to get into trying to figure out what the problem is. Got shot during the season. He's got a bent. The owl's got a bent. Bent wing, shall we say? And Steve, or anybody on Zoom who wants some snacks? Steve? No. Orca? Alfred? All right. I'm good, thank you. She'll take it away. Give us an update. So, first up is the hiring. Mm -hmm. So, I had an interview on Saturday morning with one of the applicants. It went really well. Be able to take two weeks vacation this summer. The first year, point in the summer. Okay. Because okay. the way it's the way it's set right now is you won't get any vacation time until you serve a year. So it would be if you started in January, you wouldn't get vacation time until the following Next year. Fall or January. Yeah. So he's got a house to move. He's got a, you know right. he's he's relocated. Okay. So he wants to have some time. And if you look at the numbers. We're offering him a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Two weeks of paid vacation is maybe half of that or less. Yeah. No, I think we could so make that. A I think we could make that a condition mm -hmm. of employment when we do up the letter. Say well, you, we understand you have agreed to forfeit the bonus in place of at the discretion of the road commissioner's scheduling needs or something like that. Right. Right. Which would fall under the same. Right. They have to get it approved by me before. Right. No. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't have any problem with it. I think we should have a motion. Um, I think we should put a letter together once this gets all nailed down. Yeah. 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 That's what I just. Yeah. So yeah. It's clear. That's so, what I. You probably didn't hear me. That's what I just. Yeah. Said. yeah. She did what? No. And, and I think also to just say out loud, this this is something. A request that we would handle on a case by case right. basis. We are not yeah. changing our policy. We're it's not, not precedent setting. Right. We're not setting any precedent. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, because we could get other applicants that would be definitely interested in that sign on. Right, case. right. Well, that was so, the whole idea. Yes, yeah, right. definitely yeah. a case, case uh, for sure. Yeah, I think we could do that. We'll just do a. Yeah. I have a, a letter. 
there that we've used before that we can just change. Yep. Yep. And it would be after serving a full six months similar to getting the bonus. Right. For probation. Yeah, whatever. The, what is the bonus? The, the bonus was 500, um, 500 after the first right. first 30 days of, I sent you guys a draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't okay. But, yeah. okay. All right. What else? You do we want to make a motion? We need a motion. No. It's, it's his, 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 his suspension. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it'll be in the minutes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to bring that information back to him and make sure that. Does he, he live in town? He lives in Pennsylvania. He's oh, he's the one who's moved. Oh, wow. He's relocated. Uh, of the two applicants that, that I had to choose from, he was by far the best. Okay. Um, and the other one I'm holding off on for now. And did you mention you might have another temporary to help out in the meantime? I do. Is that a definite? I confirmed that today. So that's something you can say on the record now then? Uh, yeah. That, that you've got a temporary? So, I mean, it was a phone conversation, which we're writing, but uh, it's a fellow that's worked for us in the past. You want to say his name is for the record? Uh, Dana Hoppy. Oh. Yeah. You remember Dana, right? Yeah. 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 So he was changing his employment and wants to come and help us. Great. So, so that will help with. Ed won't have to work so much. That will well, help. What you. I'm figuring is that I can use those two as part timers to temporary. Sort of as yeah. Temporary yeah. part time. Uh, <laughs>
part of this is in kind of the regulatory planning. That's probably the biggest challenge for us at the minimum. Right, okay, so, so we've got December 13 meeting that I will put on the schedule for you guys to present an updated contingency plan that gives you at least two weeks. Yeah. There's going to be a metamorphosis. Right. So we keep moving. And I think the forward. contingency plan is going to make the winter operations plan probably need some amending. I think they kind of, the contingency plan and the operations plan, I think, go hand in hand. Oh, sure they do. Know. Yeah. Well, there's going to have to be a supplement. There's going to have to be basically talked about in the, in the, uh, in our plan. You know, right. You know, okay. The, the so you guys will make sure that they connect. Yeah. First thing to do is figure out what we really want. Second is to adjust the plan to, right. okay. to accommodate that. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. I have, um, to, I have to be in Tilgate and Alfred anyway on budget, so we'll probably end through some Okay. Time. Um, anything else, or should we move on to Kent Hill? Grace, uh, are you here? Grace? Do you have anything? I am else? here. Okay, just let me check. Do you have anything else? Well, I was just going to give you an update on the trucks, the truck oh. purchase. Oh, I was wondering, I asked Rick that today. Yeah, it's... Uh, Isn't it December? That's what I keep hearing is in December. Uh, the, the, the town that we're buying the spare truck from, their new truck has, is in and it's at the body shop where they put the body in and the bottles mm -hmm. on. So, uh, but the minor setback, and I don't know that it's a setback, is that that company, mm -hmm. Tenko, is, has just decided to out, okay, wait. out of central Vermont and go to New Hampshire. Tell them to wait until they're done with this other county. Too late. They've already sent their guys. <laughs> the company that is doing the body work for the for the new truck, which yeah. the town is the, yeah. yes is it's, it's moving, so that's going to delay that. That's going to delay us. Well, it might. It might not. If, if it's already been scheduled, they're just going to move that truck and all the equipment to okay. the new facility. Start building it. So I tried to get a more accurate update today by talking to the dealership that I'm buying the truck through. Um, but he, all he knew is that he had done his part, which was supply the cabin chassis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, stay tuned on that. But I am still planning on December at this point. Okay, we shall see. What are we so the mileage on that truck is climbing, right? We had a contingency of right. maximizing the mileage, or there was some kind of I can't remember exactly what we how we addressed that. I thought we were going to be would it be a charge for over a certain amount of miles we were going to we were a lot of miles. Yeah, I think that's fully. right, and that would be through the dealership. Charlie Boys is the dealership. The one that you're that buying it from. Right. Right. So we're not buying directly from the town. I don't know. No. So there's a pass-through fee that we're paying an extra fee? No, I mean, it's, he, he valued the truck when he sent the trade. And we oh, okay. We're trade, right? You know, we're, we're buying that trade. Oh, okay, that's how we originally found it. Okay. So the purchase is between Callus and Charlie Boys Truck Center. Okay. Um, so any problem with that truck, it's going to be... Go back to with Charlie, with Charlie Boys, right? Okay. Right. right. Yeah. That makes sense to me. So, tra Charlie Boy, just say Charlie Boy got the truck tomorrow. Are they going to go through the truck? They do the anything? The deal was that it would be freshly uh, stickered, inspection sticker. They're not changing the oil or they don't do fluids or. Uh, I, I don't believe that would be okay. part of the deal. All right. So do we do the other kind of. And Sam was. We would have something. So we had talked talk about, you know, right. and obviously it's not going to be that, I don't know if it's going to be possible right. before you put it on the road this winter, but we got to get that undercoated. I mean, it was showing rust the year, well, when did I go last spring? Yes. Yeah. It was in the spring. It was. And so the thinner metal components were really starting to rust, and it was just on the chassis, it was just starting to right. flake. So. So the best time to do that would be in the spring, 
yeah. after it's dry and the, our roads are drying up and, right, and right. cutting no. it properly right. and, and really do it. Because um, to be quite honest, once that truck lands here, it's going to be on the road. No, that, that so, I just want to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as we plan, the plan, plan that I have in mind is, is to do it in the spring. Okay. And I, I know we're a little up. behind, but could I just ask for a one minute description? What is this truck? It's a 10 wheel Western Star plow dump truck. Okay, thank you. And it's from replacing our now spare, which is oh, right. a, a great deal older. Yeah, okay, and it's what year again? It's a 2014. 14. 14, okay, great, thank you. So it's five years newer than our now yeah, spare. Yeah, right, yeah. Which, speaking of that, I have sold that truck with contingency that it stays until we get our, our ours. Mm -hmm. So the guy has given me has given me a deposit. We have a contract together, um, so the truck will stay with us until we don't need it until we get ours. What are we getting for that truck? We are getting fifteen thousand. The dealer the dealer offered us thirteen thousand. So I advertised it. I put it out. I See if, to see if we can sell it outright, and I found somebody that's going to give us two thousand dollars more than the deal. Yeah. Yeah. And he's willing to sit yeah. on it until wow. until we're ready to get rid of it. So. Good, very good. This is and just some guy who saw the ad. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I know him also. I mean, he's he's a logger, lives in Woodbury, so I I mean I'm acquainted with him so. Uh, So there you go, We've got a truck coming. All right, moving right along. Um, anything else, or can we talk about Ken Hill? No, nope, I'm good. Okay, I'm Grace. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Job on hiring. Yes. Yes. And it's fine to hire. Yeah. I'm excited about. Yeah. No, I think we're going to be in good shape. No. Plus, you can have. Okay. Here's the spreadsheets <laughs> that. Grace sent. Um, would you like to explain? Would you like to expand? Yes. Uh, I, I can't. Can I, I can't see anything yet. We're having technical difficulties, so you may not. Okay. Yeah, I'll just go off of what I have on mine. Spreadsheets that you send are called up on the screen. Great. So and, yeah. And the, I'll just give you a little rundown. So I've been working on the brick building resilient infrastructure and in communities FEMA grant application for the Kent Hill Road culvert. Um, as a reminder, this would be a scoping study to evaluate alternatives for the culvert that goes under Peck and Brook. Um, I've developed a draft budget and a draft schedule based on conversations with Roy Schiff over at SLR Consulting who's familiar with the 2016 study and that information. So the spreadsheets I sent over are the draft budget and the draft schedule. So the budget, um, I think the estimate is around 40, 41,000, all things encompassed. And then the project management costs are capped by FEMA at 5%. So they would be, let me just bring that up. They would be, uh, 1900 and that would be the cost for CVRPC to administer this this grant. That's where it's, that's the little chart. That, there's a little box. It's green. It says project management. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then so the grand total would be 41900 and the cost share for Callus would be 10479 And I had a conversation with Rick earlier today about this and gave him the rundown and Rick I did confirm with VEM that for the cost share Callus can do in kind or cash match and there's oh, no right. limit there's no limit on that <clears throat> great that's good news yeah, yeah. um okay. so I sent Rick over a draft word copy of the application just because it's easier to review in word versus in the FEMA online grant portal, which is hard to navigate. Um, but I have a solid draft and I was thinking, it's due, to, it's 
due to the state, it's due to the state on December 17th. Um, so I was thinking, Rick and I were thinking at the December 13th select board meeting, I could present the final application and then get the go ahead to submit it. So we, can we go ahead and put that on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yep. No, oh, do the 17th, we have to, so. How much time do you think for that, Grace? Yeah. Uh, I don't think much time. I mean, it won't take me long, probably like 10, 15 minutes. 15 okay. minutes. All right. Yeah. And this is called the brick application? Yes, brick. Brick, like without the K. B yeah, without the K, yeah. Okay, you got it. Yeah, that's that's all I got. Um, if Denise, if you wanna see a copy of the application, I'm happy to send it on to you too. Okay. Yeah, let's, just let's run through the rough timelines once, right? Yeah, just quickly. Sorry, what, what did Rick say? Let's, We're looking. Let's go through the rough timeline for the, based on the, when, assuming this goes in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's due, it's due to the state December 17th. The state combines all of the applications and then submits it to FEMA by the end of January 2022. Um, Ideally, we would hear back from FEMA by August 2022. That is not set in stone, but that's the optimistic timeline. So with that, you would probably get a grant award by September 2022, and that's when the project would kick off. So CVRPC would coordinate the process of getting a consultant to do the scoping study, and then continue through fall 2022, winter 2023, spring. And then the schedule has us, has the project ending in July, 2023. So about a year-ish. Yeah, it's a long process. Yeah. Yes, yep. Nice and then the, it. yeah, and then the final result would be uh, concept design for the preferred alternative and then ideally the town could apply for a future grant for final design or implementation so what so what we're talking about right now this application is just the scoping study, scoping study. okay yes. yes so this doesn't even involve a timeline for when the actual work would take place no we have a final design construction Okay. All right. And this is necessary to during the oh, yeah. process. Oh. Okay. Very good. Anything else on this? No, that's it. Alpha, any questions? No. Thank you, Grace. Thank Thanks you so much, for Grace. Thanks for those answers today. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy you Thanksgiving too. to you. You too. Bye. Okay. Um, next up is just a, so you know what's going on. Um, the Old West Church is planning to hold a service this year, but it's going to be outside. Um, oh, really? Yeah. And they're, they're contemplating closing the road off for a period of time between 5 to 6.30. And I guess the authority for doing that comes from the road commission. And you would supply them with cones and signs and all that. And they would post it on Front Porch Forum letting folks know that that's been going to happen. Have you talked to them? I have not. This is the first time I've heard of it. So oh, Toby, well, you should have heard about it because Toby has been in the loop on this. And I think I sent That's off. great, but I haven't heard of well, it. Well, I, I think I sent That's out free. <laughs> right. But what I was going to say was I, I sent an email and included you in the email about this. Well, we've been conversating about the road, the crossing there, the right way. No, this was about the Old West Church thing. Alfred didn't see the email. I didn't see that email. Okay. No, well, I now you know. I haven't talked to Toby about it either. Okay, well, Toby says it's your jurisdiction to decide whether they can close the road. Because they wanted to know. Okay, I did, I did see that. But I, again, I thought it was about the, mm -hmm. about the. Yeah, no, it's Because they're probably going to have to close the road when they dig a water line across there. Right, this is not that. This is the Old West okay. Church. I was not aware of okay. that. Well, so we've got a lot going on on, on that side of town. 
Right. Old West Church. Well, that'll, that'll be done, done in that way. The underground power. No, I know. But I'm just saying, if I'm looking at an email and it's yeah. really oh. clear as to which uh, project right, they're right, working right, on, right. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. then I need to, you know, I need to be clear on which project. There's three okay. of them well, going on there. Right. Well, they're supposed to contact you, the Old West Church people. Okay. If this is going to take place, they don't even know if they're going to close the road. And this is they don't even know if they're going to ask for Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Right. So I told I, mean, them, I know in the past there's been lots of problems there with with vehicles. Yeah. Because uh, it's a big big event. Right. And it's it's great. But I mean I've had times where I can't get a plow truck through there because people park on the side of the road and you can't, you know. Right. Yeah. No one here So closing it is is I'm not against it against the idea. Yeah. Well they know they have to contact it has you. To be, you know, it has to be labeled in good shape so that people know. Fire department should be Fire department, yeah. right. And it's after hours, so school buses, it won't affect, I suppose. Right. It's, right. You said it's between 5 and 6 or something. 5 and 6 30. Yeah. So, so the, the bottom line is that they need to contact you, right. which is what I told them. We don't have a town permit to ask right. for permission to close the road, so that it defaults to you. So the question is, the questions are, what segment of the road is is going to be cordoned off, or where are they going to park differently? Is the road is closed? They'd have to close the whole road. I mean, okay, so the whole road, except yeah. for the local residents. At, so that, at intersect, at but if they're going to be, well, my cons question concern is if they're going to be having a service outside, and the reason they're closing the road is because there are going to be people spilling onto the road, then I would expect that they're going to be parking further down the road than is normally. You know, is is the norm, and I don't know if that's going to shift the neighborhood tolerance of that parking now moving mm -hmm. down in front of their houses. So there probably should be obviously be a notice. There will be a notice. <coughs> well, and that's not that's not the whole road closed. That's right. I mean, if you if you close if you literally close the whole road, then they're well, you just walking. When I say close the whole road, you have to have people have to have a way to turn around. I mean, you can't just go halfway through the road. Yep, we got a road closure with no place for them to turn right. around. Right. Because you know there are trucks, there are bigger. There's trucks, some of them with a trailer. How are you going to turn that thing around? Right. So, so are people going to walk to the long church? Long. Right. So would people then be parking down by Peter Harvey's house? Oh, they, and yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it the full length of that road. Well, but if the road's closed and cars are going to be blocked from going in because of the turnaround issues. That means the cars are going to be all the way down to Gail Graham's, maybe? I don't know. I, I don't know what... Which way? Where are they going to be parking now on Kent Hill Road and walking up? I don't... I, so that, this yeah, has to be figured out. Questions. They are really good questions, and I'm assuming that Alpha will... Yeah. Take yeah, and I've got to know what their questions. thoughts are as far yeah. as how big of an event they're thinking okay, about. Okay, so my point, what I just, what I said was, they are talking about perhaps closing the road. It is not indefinite. Right. When they make a decision, if it's definite, they will be in contact with you as to whether you approve it, how you want to do it. I'm just putting this on right. everybody's radar. Right. Right. Well, yeah. at that point, I'll, I'll ask those <laughs> questions. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We don't have to spend a lot of time tonight because it's not a definite. I'm just putting it up there so people are aware in case any of us get any phone calls or emails. Yeah, that sounds really Well, good. I do think we should. Real. You said it a couple of times, but but we don't even necessarily have to hear about this again because it's up to Alf. We're we're getting we are clearly articulating that it, we consider it within Alfred's discretion no, to figure right. out how to make this work if if possible. Um, right, and they know they have to work with Alfred. We do the. Do we? I mean, just to be clear, we would probably do the the road closure side. Yeah, well, that's what they would have to do. They would have to have some other signage, that's right. And then, yeah. Right, and then it needs to get posted so on the front door. So that also means taking the signs down after the event. Right. 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 And if, you know, yeah, let, them, let them let them know they need to do it themselves. Yeah, you could ask them to at least work. Right, I mean, mm -hmm. if you supply them with the signage, they can put the signage up if they put it where you say, and then they can be asked to take it down and bring it back to the town garage. And the next who's, who's who's in contact? Um, Richard Mazel and Barbara McAndrew. I think Barbara's the president. Right? She is. Richard's the one, though, that was working on this piece of it.
So he would be your contact. Yes. Since I can send you his email and phone number, but like I said, I think this is getting bigger yeah. than one, what we were, what I intended was just to let people know. One question, I mean, if in that conversation, if, I mean, if they consider this thing running a bus, a bus from Palos Elementary School or something like that. But I don't have, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not on the Old West Church Board. That's much up to smarter. Them. Yeah, I mean. That's, you know, that's up to them. I'm not on that, I'm not on that board. I'm just giving this piece of information out. I wish I'd never said anything. Yeah, well, I can yeah. recommend that too. I can mention it. You can mention that. that. Yeah. 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 If they get in touch with me. Yeah. Yep. That can be really good. Yeah. 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 Just eliminate the hundred cars. Right. But then you got to get to school to let the first student learn a bus. Well, first student yeah. one, they, would, they they'd probably contract it with whoever the bus, you know, bus right. for. Right. So, can we move on? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Can we move on? Yeah. I think this is getting way more than it was ever intended. I was going to move the church. Just more work for me. Make a motion to move the church. Well, there you go. Down to the school. Okay. Why don't they have a church? They could have a church service in the school parking lot. There we go. I thought I was going to move on down here. Yeah. But we're going to get kind of punchy. Okay. Mountain Tamers. Mountain Tamers. How are you? Thank you very much. So, do you hear enough to be interested in anything? I, I, you folks are doing well. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Is anything on this list changing from last year? I have one minor change. Um, would you like me to come around? Yes, please. Sure. Sure. I have the letter right here. It's also called up on the screen. I don't know if anybody can. Uh, the list, uh, as you know, uh, those of you who have participated in this the past week, continue to try to decrease the number of requests we have on this. We don't like riding on cloud roads anymore than I'm sure Alfie wants us there. But uh, that said, um, there's a list of eight items on here. It's identical to last year except number eight, which is down at the bottom. Uh, we have a logging operation that's going to be taking place uh, with the landing off of Long Meadow Hill Road. Uh, this is going to require us detouring around that. So we will need yes. to open a, or request to open a short section of Long Meadow Hill Road, about a thousand feet of it, uh, just in off the county road. We won't be coming out to the county road, but we'll be coming down the hill portion here to get around the landing, then going down across uh, Brian Benzel's land and back across Wheeler Road where we cross now. Uh, the rest of the requests, only the top two are for actual uh, vast snow machine trails that are part of the statewide program. The others are all access um, for residents who have snowmobiles that just can't get to the trail system. So there's very, very limited amount of traffic on items three through seven. Right, and you did a good job of making that very clear. Yeah. Uh, number eight will be temporary. As so if the logging ends, we will put the trail back. He's going to be using our trail as a skidder road. So we can't co-share um, co it with him. And, uh, but if he gets done in February, we'll be moving the trail right back on there and that one the whole way. So any questions, we're happy to, any, about anything with the uh, Snowmobile Club, I'm happy to try to answer them. Do they get marked along the road sections when they uh, yes. the trail uh, on there? We preempt, and I'll give you an example. That one over there, both coming down off the hill and coming in from the county road will be preempted with signs that say snow machine trail. We'll also lo add logging operation to that sign. We'll hang a second sign under that so that uh, the motorists will also know that uh, there will be a yeah. logging operation going there as well. Um, I mean the motorists on the county road. Well, it, on, it'll on be, Long both the notices will be on, on Long Meadow, but it'll be in off of the county road because they, we won't be using Long Meadow Hill all the way up to the county road. Right. It's, it's, it's use, exactly. in here about 700, 800 feet or so. We'll be turning back off of it again. Okay. And yes, uh, the snow machine operators themselves will also see a sign that says road open uh, to the public highway, road opens, keep right. 10 miles an hour, that type of stuff. That's all, everybody will have an office. Now you said in your, in your letter here, it says this is temporary to avoid a logging operation. Yes. 
Yes, we well, that's what oh, we're Oh, I see what you mean. Too. We're going to stay in the road to get by the mouth of his landing, and then we're going to turn it back into the woods on Brian's property mm -hmm. and using a secondary road that he has, which he has graciously let us use, to get back down to Wheeler Road, uh, okay. parallel the current trail that we use in there now. Okay, I, I was reading it as a newer Never mind. <laughs> Not important. Okay, okay. That's... would somebody I make a motion that we approve the Mountain <laughs> Tamers request for the snowmobile season 2122? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And oh, no. do you think we're going to get snow? <laughs> I'd, I'd rather plow snow than mow lawns. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. If you have any questions, I think uh, my number is on there yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And uh, if you have any questions, anything during the winter time, please feel free to give me a call. We'll do yeah. the best we, we can. Yeah, we usually don't have much problems. Do the best we can to do. Yeah. And happy Thanksgiving to you and Mary. Yeah. Give Mary my best. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Next up. Um, I don't know. Ryan, are you on, on video? Yeah, we are having, surprise, surprise, technical difficulties. So thank you for um, asking to serve on the Historic Preservation Commission. And can you just give us a, you're on the um, DRB and you're on the DAB. So um, looks like this is right up your alley. Uh-oh. Huh. Did we lose people? No. Are you there? I think Brian, I think Brian may be further frozen. Oh, okay. Better than us losing connection. Um, Brian, if you can hear us, I wonder if you want to turn the video off to get a little brain that maybe. Does anybody here have their... Okay, you want me to shut down? Yeah, it, 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 it's like this time. It's like yeah. this time every meeting. And this is what I was telling Cliff. So he's going to check it out because it's like around between eight and nine we have this problem. And when everybody right. sits down and watch Netflix. I don't know it is. <clears throat> I don't know. There's something going on. I'm just going to shut that. So, so what, what, we're oh, seeing, is. what we're seeing is Ryan spoke yeah. with David. Ryan yeah. Sheets has a relevant there he is. background. And Ryan. Did he say again, Ryan already serves how? He serves on the DAB and the DRB. I'm at. Okay. So, okay. So Hi, Ryan. He, so he would be, he's asking to fill the vacant term expiring in 2023. They're down one member. On the Historic Preservation right. Commission. I think Ryan will be a good addition. Um, he's very aware of procedures and making sure that paperwork gets done. So. I, I was just going to ask, uh, and Ryan, may, this is a probably good question for you to answer. Where is the, where, where if ever, or if at all, is there any overlap between the Historic Preservation Commission and its function and the work of the Design Advisory Board and the Design and the Development Review Board. And the reason I'm raising that is partly because I don't I don't know, but also because you know more and more more and more we try to just pay attention to where where you might you know say to yourself I need to recuse myself because I already answered this question here and now it's coming up again and. You know, I formed an opinion, so blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I mean in my experience, which granted is somewhat, you know, limited, um, only having been on the DRB and DAB for a couple of years now, um, I, I've not encountered any overlap actually with the Historic Preservation Commission other than, um, I believe one time, oh, actually, sorry, that, that, was, that was not even for a, a board. Of, as the architect of the East House General Store, we once, I mean, had a meeting with the Historic Preservation Commission, um, but I, I've never been involved in any um, in any hearings or involved in any 
Right, and you you understand what it means to follow the open meeting law? Yes. Okay, and you would help others to understand what that means? Yes. Okay. And you would encourage everybody to go to trainings? That's not the answer. I don't know that that's his job to do that. Yeah. Well, no, we, but if, if we had talking about doing a training on the open meeting law again. Right, if we I, had a training, would, yeah. you, would you agree to attend? Yes. Okay. Anything else? You're asking any leading questions. <laughs> I'm not even an attorney, I don't know how to do that kind of one. I think that uh, Ryan would be an excellent petition. Mm -hmm. He's been absolutely wonderful with regard to the store. And he knows a lot about historic. Yeah, and he knows a lot about historic preservation. So I think it's a real bonus for us that he's so got that background. So is that a motion, Mark? Yeah, I move his appointment. I'll second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, Julie and Thank side? you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, we want to talk about the other <coughs> side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I, I, I messed up. I forgot. I forgot about John. The stockpile. I forgot. I skipped over. Update on additional site for stockpile and gravel sanding, which if you and Alfred were going to meet. I don't think we didn't meet, so no okay. update. But that, that pro our property doesn't go to the road there. Yeah. We just take the goddamn bag. Okay, so you it's, not, that's private property. It is private property. Well, I looked at, at the maps, the uh, land parcel maps. Okay. The town forces and searches on them. Okay. Well, if they, that would be great. Well, if you find something, yeah. let us know. Yeah, let us know when you're ready. Okay. Next up is. Do you have anything else? No. Okay. Next up is. Um, and hopefully, this won't be a half an hour discussion. So we can agree that we're going to hold a public hearing. The, the, the um, Planning Commission has already done what it needs to do with regard to amendments to the town plan. They held a hearing on October 19th. There's a schedule that everybody received, you know, about what's next. So what's next is for us to hold a public hearing. I don't anticipate that it's going to be controversial or overly attended. Hey, Mark and Alfred, could you take that outside, please? It's really distracting. Thank you. Um, so we just need to have a public meeting on the town plan amendments. And we have to give 15 days notice. I drafted a select notice of public hearing. I just need Katie to give me the details for the Zoom. We have to publish it in our normal places, and then we have to publish it in the newspaper. So what, you're, what you'll see that Katie put in the folder, um, there. Katie, did you put the select board notice in the folder? Oh, there it is. Of course she did, selling me asked that question. Of course she would put it in the folder. Um, so there it is. We just need to fill in the Zoom information and if we could do this on December 13th, if we get this to the newspaper tomorrow by noon, they can publish it in the Times Argus and we're good to go. I made the motion that we hold a public hearing um, to allow comments and questions on the proposed amendments to the 2016 Callis Town Plan, that we hold a meeting on Monday the 13th at 6.30 here, that we uh, include a, a Zoom participation option, and that we authorize Denise to take care of posting our notice everywhere it needs to be. Okay, thank you. All right, second. that's the second? All second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And there was just something else I was going to say about this. Um, is, the, is the town plan, approval of the town plan, come to us? Or is it entirely a planning commission matter? It's us. It's, it's us. us. It's, it's us. us. So the they zoning, iterate it. it comes zoning, to us. zoning goes to the voters. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or is it the other way around? I can never remember. The zoning goes to the voters. We did a plan. It was an attempt by a former chair of the planning commission to have the voters vote on every change of the plan. So every minor change, every, every change. And right. the voters voted that idea down. But does the zoning have to be consistent with the plan? Yeah, yes. so the next thing they'll have to do is work on zoning. So the zoning, but you know, the current zoning is okay, but if there's... Right, as they make, as they... Yeah, they, don't, don't but, they but you always do the plan. You do the plan the first, zoning. and then you do the zoning. So after we assume we have our public meeting, there's no huge outcry, or the board doesn't have any changes that it asks the planning commission to make. Mm -hmm. If we ask them to make changes, and we got to do the whole thing over again. They got to hold another because hearing. Because they have to make the changes, and it comes back to us. Right. But we don't amend. No, no, we recommend. No. Yeah. We right. could recommend that we don't agree with this. Could yeah. you say it this way? Or and, our and approvals and contingent on the following changes. Right. Usually. But the strong way to say it. As a practical matter, the amendment, the amendments proposed. There have been times when the amendments have or, been or the overhaul of the town plan was a big deal. Yeah, it was. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not that long ago. Not long ago. It might have been 2016. I remember. Mm -hmm. that was on the That's when it was 16. Yep. Really? Yeah. Um, it was very controversy. Anyway, yeah. this is a this is a narrow amendment that would basically somebody else can say it probably better than I am, but that allows um, the memorial. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Right. So, so this, is, this is this is a this is the North Montpelier. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know yeah. That. yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a very this is a it's more it's it's, it's somewhat a, specific. It's a tweak. I just wanted to know the process. So yeah. The yeah. process is it's a providence. The drafting of iteration of is the problem providence of the planning commission. Mm -hmm. We have to approve it. If we don't agree, we send it back <coughs> one way or another, right. and then they iterate it and approve it. Mm -hmm. However. Once we approve it, the zoning has to be consistent with it, and the voters do the zoning, and consequently, then the zoning has to be submitted, adjusted by the planning commission, approved by us, and submitted to the voters of town meeting. Correct. Right. And uh, there's a window within which the plan needs to plan amendment process to be completed. Right. Clock ticking that takes a few weeks. Right. So that's, that, that's right. this. That's yeah. The it's pretty. So weird. in the event that that gets rejected, the zoning gets rejected. Then the town plan has to be plan has to be reworked. Yeah. So yeah. why are if you're back working backwards? Right. Yeah. But you I know what? That's it. the way the process is. It's good. Oh. It's done by statute. Yeah. Well, we, okay. Yeah. Just one of those. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean the plan has to be. It's actually might be able to the zoning. It might be able to the zoning, so it's still. Consistent. Well, that's that's the, the plan is not for sure. So let's be Can I just tell there's about three people talking right now? Right. Pardon me? I know. What? So are we are we all set with this? Huh? What? Okay. All done with this topic. Moving on. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 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 um town report schedule. Barbara put this together. Um yeah, that's this thing. So I just wanted you guys to be aware. Yeah, that's this, right? Right. Yep. That's that. So on December 13th, we have to approve Bayland Town meeting ballots to all the active voters and the school ballots. So that's something we have to do on the 13th, but that shouldn't, seems like that should be like a no five minute yeah. item. So, mm -hmm. all right. And um, minutes, did anybody else review these besides me? Are you ready to vote on them? I skimmed them and I'm ready to vote on them. Okay, very good. Um, I went in and made a few minor kind of typo word changes, but it didn't change the content or the context. So is that a motion, Mark? Uh, okay. And yes. Then, okay, and I'll second that. All in favor of approval of the November 8th minutes, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, Sharon's is abstaining. Um, I would really like the board to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Okay. But, but do I have to state the ground? Yeah, you, 
Yes. Personnel matters? Personnel, Personnel matters. matters. Okay. Um, okay, wait, 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 stop motion. <laughs> we gotta wait for Orca to 